uh, road for them. You have a 40-something-year-old quarterback who would have to win, uh, you know, three games to get to the Super Bowl. Uh, and he hasn't ever had to do that. I mean, they've always been the one or two seed, and now he's older. So if the Patriots aren't able to hold serve and win out and get one of those top two seeds, you know, we could be seeing the end of the dynasty sooner rather than later. Well, we certainly hope so. Well, we've been talking about it uh, a little bit today. The Colts and the Giants tomorrow, all they got to do is uh, they're at home. We should take care of business. We should beat the Giants. We need some help from the San Diego Char- Chargers to beat the Baltimore Ravens. We also need a win, uh, Pittsburgh to win. And we need a little help today from the Washington Redskins as well. All of those scenarios would help the Indianapolis Colts get in. So let's talk about the Redskins and the Titans. The Redskins uh, are another one of those teams that have uh, have come alive, if you will, in the recent weeks and are, are playing some good football. But so is the Tennessee Titans. So the Washington Redskins are at Tennessee. This should be a good, good game. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it really should be. And it's probably going to be a real low-scoring game, I would think. You know, the Redskins like to, to play those low-scoring games. And that gives them their best chance to win, uh, especially because you're running Josh Johnson out there, the quarterback, uh, who's only been with the team for a couple of weeks. But, you know, the longer he's been with them, the more playbook you can absorb, the more practice time you get with your teammates. Um, you know, so that, that kind of helps him going into this week. I think it'll be three weeks with the team now. Um so he's getting a little more familiar with everything, teammates, playbook, being in the building, coaching staff, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think, the, I think the Redskins are a, are a legitimate threat to beat the Titans this weekend. The Titans are kind of a Dr. and Jekyll and Mr. Hyde team. They've been up and down kind of all year. You don't know what you're going to get uh, week in and week out. But I like the emergence of Derrick Henry. Uh, they're, they're, you know, that big running back out of Alabama that has uh, rushed for big yards the last two weeks. I think he's combined for over – 400 yards rushing these last two weeks. He, he looks to be a little bit more patient. He looks to be uh, understanding. That he just has to kind of take what he gets. He used to just try to hit a home run every time he touched the ball, and that got him into trouble and, um, you know, led to some diminished playing time. But he's playing smart now. Uh, he's looking like the kind of back that they drafted uh, a couple of years ago, former Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, I think he won the Heisman Trophy. Um, so, you know, I like what they're doing there, and they're at home. So I, I think – you know, and it's not going to make you or Colts fans happy, but I think the Titans are going to find a way uh, to get a W here, but it's going to be a very low-scoring game. We've been talking with Ed Kratz, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, with the sports exchange, www.footballmaven.io slash Eagles. Uh, last question, Ed, I know we got to let you go because you're driving up to New York City, uh, but, you know, I, I, a couple things. I, I saw, I know I'm a Colts homer here, but I saw that we kind of got snubbed in the Pro Bowl arena. Also, I think two top honors, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a, I'm a homer. I'm saying this because I think they've earned it. I think two top honors, Andrew Luck gets an MVP and Coach of the Year goes to Frank Reich. What are your thoughts about that surrounding the Indianapolis Colts? Yeah, you know, that, that's very interesting. Um, I think – I love Frank Reich. I think he's done a terrific job with the Colts. But I think that coach of the year will probably go to the Chargers coach, Anthony Lynn, uh, for what he's done with the Chargers. Now, Andrew Luck, MVP, um, you know, again, I, I would love to see that. I think he deserves it. Is he, is he eligible for the comeback player of the year? Um, I'm not sure he is. I would is, think so. Yeah, I, I think he should win that hands down, um, the comeback player. MVP, gosh, I haven't, you know, I really haven't given that a whole lot of thought. Uh, I think, you know, Drew Brees obviously uh, is in that mix, although he's kind of struggled recently. I think Phillip Rivers could get some consideration. But, you know, I I would put Andrew Luck in that mix. And, uh, you know, there's no clear-cut winner this year, uh, which could favor Luck. So he certainly deserves to be talked about in that conversation. But I think the coach of the year um, probably is Anthony Lynn. To have that team 11-3, and Uh, after, you know, some injuries uh, that they have had to overcome, too. I just think that, you know, he he probably is the front runner uh, for that award. Um, But, you know, who who knows? Uh, We'll see. I mean, if the Colts win that that division, my goodness, that would certainly give Frank Reich some leg to stand on to to become the coach of the year. Um, Yeah, but, but, but we'll see. 
we will see, and we are excited to see. I know we've come uh, to the end with you. I hope you have yourself a merry, merry Christmas, sir, and uh, safe travels to you there. And uh, go Eagles and go Colts. Where can people <laughs> hey, yeah, find your work at Masterpieces, by the way? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, one thing I want to say first time before you go is you, you have a great time tomorrow at that Colts game. That's going to be fun. You, you won't get to see Odell Beckham. He's not going to play. But, you know, you're going to get a look at Saquon Barkley up close and personal. And, you know, even though he plays in, in another team's uniform, you can't help but love watching that kid run the ball. I mean, he, he is just spectacular with what he does. He, he'll win the rookie. He should win the offensive rookie of the year, speaking of these post, postseason awards. And, and you're going to get a, right. an up-close look at him. And, and he's fun to watch, man. I'll tell you, he, he's, even though he plays in New York for the Giants, even within the NFC East, and the Eagles have to face him twice a year, I just love watching that kid play. He catches the ball. Uh, he's, he's a great kid. He's got a great attitude. Uh, he's everything you'd want on your team. And just enjoy watching him play because you never know when you're going to see him live again. Uh, and it's a treat to watch him play. So enjoy yeah, that. I appreciate I appreciate that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And as far as the Rookie of the Year, uh, Baker Mayfield may have something to say about that as well. But certainly uh, he, he, he will yeah. be in, 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 the, in the mix as well. All right, uh, Ed, you have yourself a, a, a great Christmas, and we'll talk with you soon. Thanks, Tom. Merry Christmas to you and yours. All right, buddy. We'll see you. Ed Kratz, yeah, our official – our official NFL contributor uh, joins us uh, and uh, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles. And you can find his work at the sports exchange, www.footballmaven.io slash Eagles. We'll be right back right after this. We're going to get into some Pacer and NBA talk. Grant Alstiff uh, joins us, obviously a, uh, a, a columnist for the Kokomo Tribune for the uh, Pacers, a uh, college student at Arizona State University. He joins us and talks some uh, NBA and some Pacers. Uh, here in just a moment, we get back right here on the Balance Radio Network. The Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and serves alongside active duty Air Force members in times of a national crisis. In addition, the Air Guard serves the state and local community in a wide range of capacities. The reason people join the Air Guard is as diverse as our members and includes such reasons as a deep desire to serve their country, money for college, travel, new job skills, and the pride that goes along with belonging to the greatest military organization in the world. I joined because I felt a calling to serve my country, but I didn't want to be far away from my family. So the Indiana Air National Guard was a perfect fit for me. With over 95 different career opportunities to choose from and 100% paid college tuition to any state-funded college, why not give us a call? Call 1-800-841-3103 or visit online at goang.com to find out more. Again, that's 1-800-841-3103. The Air National Guard, guarding America, defending freedom. It's double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant eland, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. Feed the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. Shop the Simba Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous pork chop down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. Welcome back to the balance. 917 889 8516 is our digits. We are widening it down. We've got about 20 minutes left on the clock. 
Thanks to Rick Rigg and Matthew Emery joining us earlier on in the show to talk some college football and college basketball. Also, super uh, fan of the Cleveland Browns, Adam Gibbon joined us as we'll talk a little bit about those Cleveland Browns and his hopes for a playoff picture. Uh, we'll see what happens there. And, of course, uh, we just got done talking to uh, Ed Kratz, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles, and our official NFL contributor, breaking down all of those scenarios. Believe me, there are more. I'm sorry we could not get to all of them. But we're going to shift gears over to the NBA now a little bit with Grant Ossip. Uh, Grant, always to uh, uh, have you on board again this year. Uh, I know that you joined us a little bit last year. and. Uh, now, are you in Arizona or are you in Indiana today? Uh, I'm actually in Texas visiting family for uh, Christmas. Okay. okay, so you're in Texas. So you're in you're in the warm you're still in the warm weather uh, client uh, client climate uh, area. So for Christmas, uh, that's good. Uh, Grant is uh, uh, certainly a student at Arizona State University studying uh, sports media. Does a great job covering the Pacers for the uh, Kokomo Tribune uh, and the and Indiana. Pacers columnist for the Kokomo Tribune and Indy uh, coverage as well. And certainly a couple more years there at Arizona State before he goes out there and conquers the world of sports media. So, so glad you could join us. Let's talk a little bit about Miles Turner and the Indiana Pacers. Miles Turner has turned a leaf. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think he has too. I think, um, you know, over this last month, he's averaging a little over 15 points, just under 10 rebounds. And surprisingly three and a half blocks per game. Um, you know, I think, uh, I, I think this year um, the main thing about him is that he started off a little slow um, and then he missed a game because of an ankle injury and it seemed like he, he was playing through something. So I feel like, I feel like he was able to kind of, you know, get closer to 100%, and then that's why we're seeing improved results since he came back from that injury. And, um, you know, uh, I think another thing, too, is that, like, he's gotten a little more offensive involvement and more more playing time as well since returning from injury. And, you know, that may be correlating. But, um, you know, that's helped him quite a bit. And he's – I think this is arguably – uh, in December, probably his second best month of his career, arguably first, if you're going to take defense and rebounding in consideration. Because he's had one month, I believe it was uh, January of 2016-17 season that he averaged a little over 17 points per game. So he's definitely playing some of the absolute best basketball of his, of his uh, NBA career right now. So let's talk a little bit about Victor Owen Depot. I, I know he says he's about 90 percent. He's, he's certainly uh, becoming more and more involved in, in, in the games here recently. Uh, great win over the Nets, uh, winning, uh, stopping their seven-game winning uh, streak. Uh, but still, uh, we're at twenty-one and twelve. Victor Owen Depot is a big part of that twenty-one. Absolutely, I think um, I think the important thing about uh, that game uh, last night against the Nets is that uh, you know he looked like himself in the fourth quarter. I think, uh, you know, those last two games, uh, late game uh, shortcomings with, uh, you know, him leading the charge and, you know, missing free throws, uh, you know, missing some shots. Uh, I think um, I just don't think he uh, he's quite at that. uh, You know, obviously, as he said, he's not at 100 percent. And I think the reason why we saw those shortcomings in the fourth quarter, those last two games is because in the three previous games, that he was playing, they didn't need him to have heroics in the fourth quarter. They all, they won by double digits. So that's that's why I think uh, you know it was, it was intriguing to see him uh, put on a display like that last night because that's the first time he's uh, you know he's kind of led shoulder the load in the fourth quarter and you know truly um, you know took over a game since coming back. Let's talk a little bit about the Indiana Pacers going forward, and and what, as we look as we look going into the the trade deadline coming up in February, are there any hot buttons that the Indiana Pacers are looking at? Who do you think stays with the Pacers? Do we do we do we make some deals? Do we go out there in the uh, in in the market and, and, and try to uh, make some uh, wheeling and dealing and shaking and baking, if you will? I think the main thing is that uh, I envision them keeping, you know, their roster mostly intact. But um, 
something that uh, was mentioned a couple weeks ago is that uh, the Pacers may be willing to uh, deal either Darren Collison or Corey Joseph, you know, to make room for uh, Aaron Holiday. Uh, 